The largest black hole ever makes our entire solar system look like a grain of sand. This monster is 100 billion times heavier than our sun and could swallow everything from Mercury to Pluto 100 times over. By the end of this video, you're going to be understanding how something this impossibly large even exists and why scientists think we might be witnessing the absolute size limit of these cosmic monsters. But here's the twist that will blow your mind. We almost missed it completely. Today, we will reveal how astronomers accidentally discovered this cosmic titan. Then I'll show you just how ridiculously big it really is using comparisons that will make your head spin. We'll explore why this black hole challenges theoretical growth limits and finally the big payoff, whether there's an actual limit to how large these monsters can grow. This matters because Phoenix A black hole isn't just big, it's challenging our ideas. Now let's get into it. So, Here's how this wild story begins. Back in 2010, a team of astronomers in Antarctica was using the South Pole Telescope, just doing routine observations of the southern sky. They weren't even looking for black holes, they were studying galaxy clusters using something called the Sunny Zeldovich effect, that's basically detecting hot gas between galaxies. They stumbled upon the Phoenix Cluster, about 5.7 billion light years away from Earth. That's roughly 33.5 billion trillion miles in the constellation Phoenix. Now, they immediately noticed this cluster was weird. It was pumping out more X-rays than any galaxy cluster ever observed. Like the entire cluster was on fire. But the crazy part is that at the center of that main galaxy, Phoenix A, something was creating stars at an insane rate. We're talking about 740 new stars per year. For a comparison, our Milky Way makes about six stars per year. Six. The answer? Well, a black hole so stupendously massive that scientists had to double check their math multiple times. Using detailed models of the galaxy and its gas and feedback, researchers calculated the black hole's mass, 100 billion solar masses. That's 100 billion times the mass of our sun. If you took every person in America, all 330 million, and each person represented the sun, you'd still need to multiply that by 300 to match Phoenix A black hole's mass. Okay, let's talk size. <laughs> because numbers this big, they're meaningless without context. Phoenix A's event horizon, that's the point of no return where not even light can escape, has a diameter of 5 190 billion kilometers. That's 366 billion miles. Let me break that down. The distance from the Sun to Pluto, about 3.7 billion miles. Phoenix A is 100 times that distance across. If you somehow replaced our solar system with this black hole, it would stretch from the Sun to Pluto and back 50 times. Here's another way to think about it. If you were traveling at the speed of light, that's 186,000 miles per second, fast enough to circle Earth 7.5 times in one second, it would take you 71 days and 14 hours just to travel around Phoenix A's edge. That's over two months at light speed. Wild, right? Now, for years, the biggest known black hole was Ton 618 clocking in at about 66 billion solar masses. That thing is already ridiculous, 15,300 times more massive than our Milky Way's central black hole. But Phoenix A is about 1.5 times larger than Ton 618 and roughly 24,000 times more massive than Sagittarius A, the black hole at our galaxy center. Think you can guess how fast this monster is growing? Drop your guess in the comments. Answer is coming up. So this thing is much bigger than our solar system. How fast is it growing? About 60 solar masses per year. That means every single year, Phoenix A is consuming matter equivalent to 60 of our suns. Every single year. That's absolutely 
bonkers. But here's the paradox. Back in 2015, Professor Andrew King from the University of Leicester published a paper showing there should be a maximum size for black holes that grow by eating stuff. The limits? About 50 billion solar masses for a non-spinning black hole. Phoenix A may have blown past that limit by 50 billion solar masses. Why is there supposed to be a limit? Well, the idea is that the disk becomes self-gravitating and fragments into stars, sometimes called the self-gravity radius of the disk. When a black hole gets too massive, the distance where stuff can actually fall into it, called the innermost stable circular orbit, gets pushed out. Eventually, it crosses the self-gravity radius, where gas and matter is more attracted to itself than to the black hole. Think of it like this. You're trying to vacuum up a massive pile of debris, but your vacuum is so powerful that it's blowing the debris away before it can suck it back in. That's essentially what happens with these ultra-massive black holes. The leading theory? Well, this thing didn't form from a single star. It couldn't have. Instead, Phoenix A may have formed from multiple supermassive black holes colliding and merging shortly after the Big Bang. Now, I gotta be honest with you, there is some debate in the astronomy community about which black hole actually holds the title. Phoenix A has that estimated 100 billion solar mass measurement, but it's based on computer modeling of stellar movements and the galaxy structure. It's not a direct measurement. TON618, on the other hand, has a more direct measurement using emission lines from the superheated gas falling into it. 66 billion solar masses. Some scientists argue that makes it a more reliable, confirmed record holder. Just this past August 2025, astronomers discovered another monster using a completely new method. The cosmic horseshoe black hole, named after the Einstein ring it creates, weighs in at 36 billion solar masses. They found it by combining gravitational lensing with stellar kinematics, which is basically watching how the black hole bends light and how it makes nearby stars move. That discovery is huge because it means we now can detect dormant black holes, ones that aren't actively eating and glowing. There could be hundreds more ultramassive black holes lurking in the universe that we just haven't spotted yet because they're not bright enough. But here's what really gets me. Phoenix A might be pushing up against the absolute maximum size a black hole can ever achieve in our universe. Recent research from Dr. Priyamvada Natarajan at Yale suggests that a few tens of billions of solar masses could be the theoretical ceiling, the biggest these cosmic monsters can possibly get. Why? Because at around that mass, the black hole starts regulating its own growth. It shoots out powerful jets that heat up all the surrounding gas, preventing new stars from forming and cutting off its own food supply. It's like a cosmic self-limiting mechanism. So let's recap. Phoenix A is the current heavyweight champion at 100 billion solar masses with an event horizon spanning 366 billion miles. It's growing at about 60 solar masses per year and it may have formed from multiple black holes colliding in the universe's infancy. We found others competing for the title, TON618 at 66 billion and the newly discovered Cosmic Horseshoe at 36 billion. But Phoenix A might already be at the ultimate limit of how large these objects can possibly become. Here's your thought-provoking question. If black holes can't grow beyond a few tens of billions of solar masses, what does that mean for the far future of the universe? Are we watching these cosmic titans reach their final forms? Drop your theories in the comments below and we'd love to see them. And if you're curious about what happens when black holes collide, the process that might have created Phoenix A, I've got a video on gravitational waves that will blow your mind. Check it out next.